Hello. I've come here just to do the little experiment that I said to you that I would do. And I'm also trying out my husband's camera as well for the first time. So I just wanted to let you know, I have a piece of paper here so that I can do some maybe little experiments if I need to, or wipe off excess paint. So that's why that piece of paper is there. Um, this painting is one that I really love as it is and that's always a really really tricky point to be at because I just enjoy looking at it as it is but the paint is very thin in areas you can see the canvas coming through so I have to do something about that um, obviously I've got pictures of this so that I know what it looks like as it is um, I haven't got them to hand but I do have my phone down there so if I get um, lost at any point I can look at that to help guide me back to the colours that I want to, it to have because I'm going to have to go over various areas of this in order to make it look like a properly considered painting. Um, to me this is a mountain scene in the Alps. When I was a child we used to go skiing and um, actually the first time I went I broke my leg and I had a, I had a cast right up to my hip which is really unfortunate because I loved skiing. Um, we went that one time and then we get, went again two years later and I found it really difficult to uh, relax, unfortunately. And I've only done it once since. It's a bit of a shame. Right, let me see. So, I, this, this area here, I love the colour, the green on it, but it's a very, in a very random place. So, that will have to be sorted out. I'm just going to enhance, or not enhance, but cover over some of this here. Because to me, this is the, this is a road. So this is a kind of cool gray color. And when you're painting at a large scale, not that I've done it very much, which is one of the reasons why I started Brave in Paint, you you want to really use your use your arm and your whole body. If you've got a very, if you've got a very large canvas, then you'd be using much larger tools than this. I mean, in some ways, I'm getting far too detailed at this point. Um, but quite honestly, I don't really know what I want to do with this yet. Exactly, I've ha have some thoughts about it. Um, my paint is slightly dried up too. So this is going to be a really short demonstration because I need to make more paint and the camera's probably going to run out as well. So. so in a way at the moment I'm kind of marking out the composition so I'm not worried too much um, about what colour is going to go over what, because that can always be fixed and changed. Um, I've got some of my pink here that I pre-mixed when I did a, a live session. Um, I'm just checking that my recording's working. When I did a live session out on my garden wall, which you may, may or may not have seen. I said there was too much pink and I'm putting a bit more pink on, but this is thicker. So I'm going to erase some of the areas that I found distracting. I really love this blue, but to me that says that there's, a, there's some kind of water down here, but it's not quite there. Uh, I need the rock edge there. And I don't want the pool to be right in the centre either, so this is going to have to be covered over. Obviously I'm doing this right from the side, so it's a little bit hard because normally I would stand like this. So you have to forgive me. <laughs> and probably I will change quite a lot when I'm not on camera. But uh, the idea is I want to do this as a journey. And um, for, for my course, that I'll be teaching. Um, I'll be doing paintings like this, 
possibly even the whole of this painting um, to show you the stages that I go through and the way that I think. And obviously you, you might have a much, much clearer process already, or you might be a complete beginner in which case don't be terrified <laughs> because it's all learning every single painting you do is um, a way to learn that is for sure there's always something new to do i mean i haven't done an awful lot of um of collage for example i'm just adding some gray now just kind of scribbling it on over the top of these lovely yellows and greens here so this is a bit like a rock face with shadows, so it needs a bit of dark. And uh, I realise I haven't actually mixed up the same blue as up there. But this is a, a, a great way, I love sort of scribbling. And this has got, the way I've just done that, has a sort of pattern-like effect. Um, and that adds to the rhythm of a painting, because all good paintings, or at least expressive ones, have a bit of a rhythm to them. And it, it adds to the cohesiveness of the painting. So I'm just kind of getting the, some shading in there. I can put this down now. But you know, this is also, this is really practice for me to um, talk while I'm painting. I do talk to myself quite a lot, I have to say. Um, so that possibly helps a little. I really love this, this lovely soft grey with that peachy colour coming through. I need more green in this though, but that will, that will come and I want to achieve this sort of colour as well. Yeah, I need some green here I think. I'm quite enjoying I'm trying to get the dark in there. I'm just using, at the moment, what I'm using is I'm using these two trays. So they're, they're not the same, but they're same size. And I've got one here that has some quite earthy colours in it. And a mixture of all these colours. So that's like the mother colour, if you like. So if I were to mix that grey into all these colours as they go on to this, it would ensure that the whole thing was really harmonious. That's one way to make sure that your colours all sit together well, which you might want or you might not. You might want something much more discordant. So I've lost my train of thought now, of course, slightly. I love that colour with the yellow. I'm all about colour. It just excites me, it really does. That's so that's so lovely. Oh, you see, you just it's difficult when you um fall in love with parts of a painting. But carry on. Just duck under there to get the water. In fact I might move that. And of course I can edit this afterwards, can't I? <laughs> I forget that, that you can actually edit it and cut things, cut things out. I think actually I need a little light. So I've got my peachy colour here on this spatula. And I'm just going to... This is a tunnel here. So that bit needs to be really dark. But the light could fall. So often you're so close to the edge when you get to, go to the Alps. The road is often, it's just a sheer drop. Yeah, it's much sheerer than that. It's funny, isn't it, how when you, sometimes when you do abstract landscapes that your memories just come out. And of course I really would like to do get out and around Norfolk and experiment with those sort of landscapes. See there, I don't know how well you can see that, that's not, that's not a, a lovely bit of painting, but what was interesting to me is how, because I worked on top of wet paint 
that I got the um, unusual kind of mixing and, take, and some paint came off, some stayed on and it makes a quite an interesting area of painting although it, as I say it doesn't look good there particularly. Um, I'm just going to get more of that light and go over the top and this will mix in of course. It doesn't need very much, I just want to I really would like a sort of triangular shape there, so that's something I can come back to and go over. That's a bit better. I want to get the, the feeling of sharpness of um, the sheer drop there. And because it's next to what is in my mind a tunnel, then I feel that that bit would be quite substantial there. Rather unlike this bit, which is just right at the edge of the road. So, now I'm going to mix up a little bit of green. And um, introduce some down here. So I've got, on my palette, I've got lemon yellow and thalo blue that's been mixed in with some white and a little bit of cobalt. So it's a really beautiful blue. It's a little bit like um, a manganese blue, which I haven't got at the moment in my paint supplies, but is obviously pre-mixed. And um, you can, as we, as we know, achieve a lot, most colours really with just a few, um, but it takes, takes work mixing them. I'm going to add to that little peachy colour. Or rather, add a little bit of peachy colour, not add a bit of little peachy. <laughs> but to me, this represents undergrowth, um, no, overgrowth over the top of yet another bridge. There's one of the neighbour's dogs. <laughs> um, you can use the back of a paintbrush to scratch in and reveal colours underneath. I, I don't suppose you can see this. You'll have to take my word for it. I've got to the stage where I really need to contemplate it, so... I need some white, I think. Touched by a little bit of blue for um, areas of snow. So I've got some white on my paintbrush. I'm going to move it over here and add some of that lovely blue. And I like this colour here, which is a bit more like a duck egg blue. So that will need a tiny touch of the peachy colour. And that's pretty close. Um, maybe a tiny bit more of the yellow, or some of the yellow. And then it should send it back. And it's really lovely to have um, contrasting shape. This has got quite a lot of scribbly shapes, but the triangular 
shape it hasn't got until now. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to treat this guy yet. So that's something that's going to develop. But I do like it, that dark colour. And, you know, this is not a realistic painting, clearly. So you can use your artistic licence. It, again, it depends on, you know, how brave you're feeling. If you're worried about what other people think and the fact that they don't like your work or they might not understand it, then that's going to inhibit you. So we have to guard against that, I think. And the more you paint, the more you'll just become comfortable with your own vision. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> And uh, I think I'm going to have to leave it there because I don't want to rush and and ruin it. But you can paint in a delicate way as much as you can, you know, with great big swathes of paint. I might be brave and do a large area here but I need to really think about what I'm doing with the composition, I think, before I do any more. And um, this, as I say, it's either going to end up being part of my free group or it may end up being part of the course that I'm developing at the moment, which leads me on, if I haven't run out of time, which leads me on to say that next week, i.e. when you're seeing this, and probably the couple of weeks after, I'm going to be concentrating on filming for that, for my course. So I'll be popping into the group, but I won't have time to do a challenge myself because believe me, I've got a big enough challenge coming up. And um, I really hope that you'll support each other and continue doing your challenges yourself. Uh, I'll obviously come in and prompt you and I'll be really interested to see what you do, but I'm not gonna have time to do my own because I will be doing some constantly. Um, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and that it was nice to see me doing it, even though I didn't actually do very much. Uh, if you've got any questions or um, want to know anything about the colours I've used or anything like that, then let me know. This needs fixing, I can tell you that now. I want it to be crisper here somehow, and I might even put a little car for fun on there. I do quite like having a bit of humour in my paintings. Take care, I hope you have a good week, and I will speak to you all soon. Bye.